All right, we, we have, okay, today moving to actually being official. Hello, welcome to the Fanboy Podcast episode three uh, with our guest, Soko, the lovely Soko. Will you introduce yourself? Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Uh, I woke up a couple hours ago. I have no uh, idea what I'm doing. What's, uh, what's going on? I have been invited by these two cuties to have a podcast moment with with them. I feel honored. I, I feel like a second generation or a third generation femboy coming from Twitch. And Yeah, I feel like there are generations. I, see, I sense that there is like a generational thing. There kind I've, of is. I've been told Why that this is like the second. Why would you be honored to be on this scuffed ass podcast? I was told that there's like a third or fourth generation at this point. I don't, I don't, I can't keep track. I don't is know. there? I don't know. Maybe? I mean, I so don't know. So wait, what your generation, generation was I? You started last year, right? I started last year. So you generation two? I guess. Might be on the verge of two and three, maybe. So wait a minute. If so, am I generation one then? After you're the... like a femboy boomer. Oh. How long ago oh, did you dude, start streaming? I started streaming. Fuck, dude. Three, four years ago now. I started. Um, uh oh shit dude i don't even remember when i like started at this point i i don't know i guess i guess the first generation would be like nano cow me i guess would finster be like gen zero was he because he guess. predates I, he predates most of us i think yeah i guess blondie predates blondie like, predates all, everyone yeah. she's I, she's like the og yeah. i thought blondie was like gen one at the very very least and then everyone else has been streaming for like over 10 years that is, that's about as OG as you can get. Yeah, yeah. she's like OG, OG. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I could consider. I don't feel like a Gen One, but maybe I am. Maybe I'm the first. I'm the first model femboy. <laughs> they got the upgraded models now. <laughs> they come with bigger tits, and it's yeah. like damn. <laughs> they come. They come with more talent, bigger tits. They come uh, with more personality. Less scuffness. Less scuffness. Yeah, it's over. I feel like. Thinking about it that way, I didn't know Blondie was doing it for 10 years. Maybe we're like Gen 6, Gen 7, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. We're we're so what? far. So there's a new generation? Who, who's coming up? I don't know. There's a lot of... there. Ha I've seen a lot of uh, other Spanish or South American um, fanboy streamers. And maybe like one or two, like Midwest as well. But they're, they're not like yeah. immediately associative <clears throat> with the... Um, existing community as far as i know mm -hmm. mm, i see yeah my like community knowledge is whatever's on amoya's channel yeah, exactly well, amoya That's really like it. i feel like amoya is the center of the femboy podcast yeah honestly I feel like, like everything um, everything orbits around amoya yeah, everything orbits around amoya it's it's like <laughs> <laughs> once you get on like the Amoya channel, you know you've made it. Yeah, it's like you know you're there once you're yeah. on Amoya. <laughs> I remember when I started out and I had like my list of goals, right? And one of them was to get on the Amoya channel. <laughs> and well, the one day like Van, I, I think it was Vanna DM'd me and was like, "Hey, Amoya is trying to get a hold of you." So I like I slid into Amoya's DMs, and she was like, "I, I thought she was like, hey, I'm gonna start posting your clips," and she was just like. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and I was like, God damn. <laughs> That's Amoya. Yeah. I didn't uh, know Amoya existed until um until Jen, local Jen, uh Jenny rated. I I only knew about mm -hmm. CRJ because of how like explanatory they can be in a lot of people's chats. Yeah, and it was yeah. it was yeah. like to me, yeah. it was like if CRJ came to my channel, it's like, okay. Never, never mention the L word said, on CRJ. CRJ's got CRJ will like he, he he's like a, a watchful owl. He like yeah. I, uh, I I mentioned before we started recording. I I submitted my partner application yesterday. Mm -hmm. I had CRJ look at it and like here find anything wrong with it. I don't care. Like just find whatever's wrong with it. He sent me like two or three dozen like little things to add to it, and I was like fucking sweet. Yeah, CRJ is pretty good at that stuff. I don't think CRJ watches my channel anymore because CRJ always gets frustrated with my chat. But <laughs> it's it's uh 
Yeah, I sometimes like it's nice because sometimes I'll say something or they'll let me know if there's like some bullshit up, and it's like, oh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for keeping an eye out on me. <laughs> I feel like every femboy channel has like the same mods. Literally everyone. There are a lot of I, I don't really have a lot of mods, but there are a lot of overlap. I feel like there's a lot of overlap with viewers too in the whole yeah, community. Yeah, there's a lot it's, of overlap. It's like. You know, if you're if you watch one film, you kind of watch all of them. Uh, it depends, like, you know, which kind of vibe you're going for. You know, yeah. Because like, I I certainly have a subsect of viewers who don't who are just Ash reviewers, and they don't they don't go anywhere else. Yeah, there's a couple like that for me. I feel like they came from like the drumming community, mm -hmm. mostly though, and they're not in it for like I don't want to say they're not in it for the personality, but they're in it for like the personality and like the music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did either Everyone of you just watches me because I'm scuffed? Did either of you know exactly what you wanted to do? I know. I mean, I know Maddie. What it like? You started drumming when you started streaming and things. Like, Astra, did yeah. you did you know what kind of streaming you wanted to do before you started? Dude, I I started in the most scuffed way possible. I've Maddie starts from vibes. like a wholesome drumming community. You know, that's wholesome. I started from 4chan. <laughs> I, I literally started on 4chan and I moved to Twitch from 4chan. So a part of my viewers, like a good section of my viewers are just 4chaners. Just like, degenerates. Oh yeah, it's yeah. fucking, I, I love them though. That's like, I love that. It's like, because yeah, I'm always, a 4chaner so I can relate. I'm the goblin queen. Yeah. You can I mean, always I, tell. I kind of had like a set like idea for going into streaming it, it's kind of funny though because like i wanted to be like this wholesome like drummer right i just wanted to play music wholesome. on twitch yeah yeah, yeah. i was i remember in the beginning i thought to myself like man all these people that just show their butts on stream they don't provide any substance <laughs> i want to be that person that does something right and now i i do the exact same thing I it's it's a it indoctrinates you. You're yeah. always like, oh, I'm not gonna do this, and then you do it yeah. anyway. It, it like, took shit. one Vanna donation, and I was like, well, I guess I'm a hoe now. <laughs> it <all> takes <laughs> that. Oh, as soon as the green starts rolling, and it, it's like, ah, yeah. shit. <laughs> guess I got to show my ass now. Damn. But no, I had like, I always knew it was a good idea when I started. Right. Mm -hmm. It is a really cool idea. It's just like getting it noticed right yeah that's the it was just part. like it was originally getting it noticed so it's so good did you like have any did you have like a goal or something when you started what was what was your mentality when you started so i come from watching years and years of streaming like i used to start i i started watching live streams back in justin.tv days if any of you oh, shit, dude. same remember yeah. that i used to watch a mm -hmm. ton of um angry video game nerd marathons oh and my god yes i would i would watch that in a little corner on my laptop while i'd play killing floor one in my oh, middle I love of the killing night floor. oh it's so based and um soon once twitch came through i was like oh what is this mainstream bullshit i was a i was a hella hipster during the height of it um but after after the pandemic i started watching a little bit more of the bigger streamers i started watching like uh like Carter, Denims, Hassan, um, Rogan, and all like that, and, and like Bill Neff. I, I really enjoyed their- I have a friend who hates Hassan. I, I, I enjoyed a lot of their streams, and so initially, I wanted to make a um, a commentary channel, something kind of like the uh, Central Committee. So when I made or decided to start streaming, I originally named my channel Soko Central as like, kind of like a, a mimic from uh, Central Committee, but what is Central Committee. I've never heard of that. Um, they're they're also they're also from Pennsylvania as as Maddie, and so I um, but yeah, they're they're also a commentary channel. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, okay, okay, okay. Um, but what, what were you gonna make commentaries on? <laughs> um, I really I really found that the type of content that I gravitated to were talking about things that intersected with everybody's lives because it would be interesting enough for people to take and participate in because like if it's just a gaming thing then 
Yeah. Then it's like only people who play the game really are interested, or it's mm -hmm. like specifically that. While I really liked a lot of the channels that that I said before because they do like fun shit. They look at weird ass stuff that's happening in the world, which I find it's always nice to learn something new, as well as uh, understand how functions in society are currently going. That's pretty good, yeah. How's that? How, how did that morph into femboyism? <laughs> um, I was gonna ask the same thing. I. I uh, really have not presented femme a lot in the past like year, and so I wanted to take like an opportunity to like to do it here and just feel free to do an experiment and things. And so, as what was what was the the deciding factor that made you think I want to try being a femme boy? It wasn't really a deciding factor. I've always kind of associated with the idea. It's just like. It didn't really become official until like, like a Moya, uh, or like the Gen raid and and being put on uh, YouTube by Moya and everything like that, and meeting everybody from the community. That's like, I feel like that really solidified the decision. And um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but was there a moment in your life where you're like, oh shit, I'm a femboy? Because I I've had moments like that. Um, in case. What? <laughs> oh, you got y'all don't know it. It's okay. It's okay. I like what? I I like to look a lot at uh, a lot of art online. And in case is an incredibly talented artist. Oh, um, it's an artist. It oh. is an artist. Pull that up, Jamie. Yeah. Pull that shit up, Jamie. I'm pull, where is that? Um, I need I need to grab some like lip balm real quick. Uh, That's fine. What was the name of that? In case? I N C A S E. C-A-S-E. All right, cool. Uh, artiste. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, I've seen that person's art. Oh, I've seen them. And yeah, they make good art. Mm. They're really good. It was more like a stepping stone for me. So... Yeah. Mm. I was a normie. I started with a Stolfo. Stolfo? It's the pipeline. It all starts with a Stolfo. I guess so, yeah. I, I think for me it was... I, I had this long-time, like, internet friend that I had. Hmm. And uh, I, I show I did, like, a, you know how when you're younger you f turn on your face cam for the first time to show your friends what you look like? And it's kind of yeah. like, oh. The first thing, thing he oh. said... Yeah, yeah, the first thing yeah. he said to me was you could be a trap. And I, I, from that moment on, I was like, oh, shit. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I was like, I remember when Astolfo was a thing, or, like, just became a thing, and I was yeah. like, hmm. I'm 5'1". I have kind of, like, a baby face. I could probably do it. You're smaller than Astolfo. Mm -hmm. Astolfo is literally my, my same, like, size. <laughs> damn. <laughs> I never watched anime, so I think that's why I never got into Astolfo. Really? How did you become a femboy without watching anime? That seems kind of intuitive. Like, that's one of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. <laughs> it's how you become a femboy in the first place. Like, I think... I mean, I watched a lot of Dexter. I lo I, like, Breaking Bad. Those are the type of shows that I was watching. I didn't want really watch anime until, like, 2020. Really, I didn't... I didn't really start, like, becoming a little bit more cultured and, like, being a part of... Culture. Being a part of, like, the internet yeah. and just, like different things until the pandemic interesting interesting i've i keep looking at this guitar you got in the background what is that <coughs> that one yeah 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 it's a it's an epiphone in the shape of a les paul oh, that's fucking nice i keep looking at that and i'm always like hell yeah because I, I i like guitars some a couple guitar guitars plebeians. i think like a couple guitar streams ago i if i'm like really in the mood i'll like take a hit of my cbd pen and i'll just throw on like the most delay the most reverb and just like try and play some pink floyd it's always a vibe <laughs> yeah that's how you do it man that's uh that's my problem is i've never done a high stream and then play guitar anytime i've done that's a high stream i've just sat on the couch <laughs> <laughs> do you so wait you you play how like how much do you play guitar do you like you are you, are you gonna be a part of the femboy band i have dabbled yes. Uh, quite yes. a bit in guitar. Honestly, I have 
I've spent most of my time doing like classical finger picking guitar. Oh, that's cool. But that was mostly in school, and so now you it's just like it just doing tab and in things. But yeah, um, we can so make it work. I've we been make, well. I mean, shit, dude. I could. Yeah, if you can do that, you can do whatever. I've been learning producing for like the past year pretty hard, and so after studying a little bit of music theory, it's like I'm starting to get the pattern of the fretboard a little bit more. So, so you're like way more of a musician than I am because I fucking hate theory. <laughs> I Astro just plays Metallica. That's it. I, which basically, yeah. Yeah. If you look into the, the oh, I think I locked that channel. I have to send you some of the songs I wrote. I look back at some of those songs, and I wrote those a couple of years ago. But man, is it so like Metallica? Like one of those songs is just like, oh my god, this is just Metallica. There was one song that you sent me like when we were gonna start the femboy bed it was literally metallica mm -hmm. that you just played over <laughs> no, well no and, i did, if i sent you a song i wrote it all myself i wrote the riffs everything yeah my it own. sounds exactly like metallica yeah it just sounds exactly like metallica yeah <laughs> it's a banger ass song though i fuck you that song goes hard <laughs> oh yeah i uh... we, we gotta start the femboy bed you gotta what, what you can you can either be lead or rhythm i don't care we just gotta have we gotta have two guitars I, funny, last night, I, um, I've been trying, I really, really, really want to learn how to sing. And so I found this awesome YouTube vocals. channel of this, like, woman in Florida, or no, this woman in, like, Cal California, and she's like, uh, Victor Victoria's Victorious Singing Tutorials, or something like that. And I feel like I'm going to spend, spend some time doing that, um... Hell yeah. I think you could be a good yeah. singer. Yeah, you because we need a vocalist. I, gotta do I mean, we could, we could literally just do the Metallica thing and have, like, vocal rhythm lead and, you know, drums, right? Then we'd only need a bassist. Bassist is there a Femboy easy. bassist? Um, well, Hinka, one of my mods, wanted to do it. I we just need a Femboy bassist, a femboy? and then we got it. I mean, like, we, that's all we need. If we yeah. got a vocalist, we got guitarist. That's all we need. Do you? Okay, but if you know how to produce, do you know how to like actually record guitar? <laughs> yeah, I've been if on my stream. That's um, you'd be able to check it out. I forget which stream it was. It was probably I was wearing like a black top or something. But no, I know how to do audio levels. I know how to master. I've done a couple wow, songs so, so cool. far and showed it off Shit, on stream dude. as well. Shit, you should fucking help me with that, cause like I've been, I really like. That's my main thing is like I've been wanting to play guitar more, but it's been hard, cause like every, the only way I can play guitar right now is by plugging it into my audio interface and using a virtual amp, and I hate that so much. The virtual amp I use sounds like shit. I don't know how to make it not sound like shit, and I don't. I live in an apartment and I can't use my big ass amp indoors, and it sucks. The, so currently I have an audio stack where I run where I run my microphone through Ableton and then it's like transferred mm -hmm. to OBS. And so what I do is I just have like a ton of saturators, a ton of um, yeah, a ton of saturators and then a ton of overdrives and just like serialize them like an actual amp and then you and then that's like you know how I produce. Mm -hmm. The actual sound. There's a ton of tutorials online for it. If you can, you know, Shit. get yourself a a copy of Ableton. Oh yeah, if I get myself a copy. I've always used uh, Adi uh, Adobe for that stuff, like uh, Audition. Adobe. Ad I've never used that. I I, I like think it's normal. I like yeah, Ableton because it's fast. That. Reaper is the best because it's free. Yeah. Well, Reaper's I mean, I, I don't know. I've tried to use like proper music producing programs before i just don't get it i'm not that good at them I, like i like i like uh adobe audition because i'm just so used to it at this point yeah i just hit but... things really hard with my wood i don't know anything <laughs> about compressors and limiters and overdrives i'm just like me see drum maddie <laughs> if i had drum. five minutes before stream last time oh I it could have been so much better i know I'm, I'm, I really regret that. For for a while, I really was focused on trying to be an audio engineer because I fucking love everything audio-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's like, just just five minutes. Just five minutes. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I regret that. I really regret that. So wait, wait a remember minute, it wait. for next time. Soko, you're coming to Florida soon, right? 
I'm gonna be going there. I'll be arriving on the exactly one month on the 26th. Okay, so that's in a month. Okay, I thought that was sooner, which is good. What if? Okay, for, for, hear me out. All right. What if Maddie comes down with you, and we all go to this convention? Because I live in Orlando, right? And we at when we do that, we could. I have connections. Like set up an actual concert, like somewhere, and actually like perform somewhere, and like do a fucking live concert. Hmm. That would be sick. We could. That would be the fanboy band. Hmm. That would actually be really sick. That would be sick. Hmm. I, when I say I'm learning to sing, I say it with a capital L. Um. I have someone who can sing. If if you don't want to do it. I mean, then there you go. I don't. I am open to the idea. He's not. A, he's not a fanboy, but he can sing. Hmm. No matter. They can is it sing. Jizzy? That's, that's all that matters. It is Jizzy. Yeah. Jizzy knows how to really sing, though. He can do Tool. I would be well, down to do a tool cover. I would be really down to do a tool cover. What song would you want to do if you did a tool um, cover? I'm pretty sure I played... Jizzy came into my stream one time, and I'm pretty sure I played Sober. Sober's good. Yeah. Um, Maybe I'll try that tonight. I know... Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, Hooker with a Penis is kind of topical, oh, and it's God. easy to play. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it, it's not hard to play, though. It's the only thing about it. It's like a very simple song in comparison to how Tool normally is, you know? And plus, it's called Booker with a Penis. Yeah, it's like it's topical. I feel like it. <laughs> I I've never listened to Tool, so the names that I thought, Maddie, I thought you were saying like you you were playing it sober. And Astro, I thought oh, you were no. just being yourself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, no, fuck. no, 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 no. It's uh, you gotta uh, listen to it. It's a Hooker with a Penis. It's Tool. It's very uh, I love Tool. Tool is it's like one exactly of my favorite exactly as bands. it sounds. If you like Pink Floyd, it's like heavier Pink Floyd. It sounds very relevant to all of us. It does. Mm -hmm. I ha highly recommend giving that a listen. It's hey, I'm not good. a hooker. I mean... I'm a classy hoe. Get it right. Yeah, that's it. I'm a classy hoe. <laughs> you just make, you just get donations, exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm classy. <laughs> With the... The C that has the tail, it comes around and fucks the A and the S. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Sissy Supplies is getting the Insoka latex dresses. Sissy <sighs> Supplies has sent For me a lot of stuff. Stream. Yeah. Sissy Supplies is the supplier of Femboy Goods. Honestly, yeah. I've never actually gotten a, a package from Sissy Supplies. Really? No, I'm surprised. they're like the one person that I've never gotten a package from. I'm surprised because I've gotten a couple packages. They sent me... A collar with my name on it and I rearranged <gasps> it so it just says rats <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put it back but it's like I gotta it's it's somewhere they've sent me a lot of shit a lot of saucy shit I'll, I'll give yeah, you that yeah, yeah. that kind of like, comes with the territory they, I think they asked me one time if there was like anything I wanted and I was like hmm the biggest you no have. I'm wholesome the biggest you have yeah <laughs> Even am I though the, it doesn't fit. Am I the only one who's impressed that they have chainmail chastity? Yeah, that, no, I saw kind that. Of, that was yeah. weird. Is that like the meat if you're like trying to be kinky in the medieval ages or some shit? Like maybe. What? How just, does that even work? It just <laughs> sounds incredibly creative to me. I just like respect, honestly. Some of the shit I see on that website is just like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's like, like it is. I, I give them an A for effort, though. I mean, this they've got good products. I'm not gonna deny that. Like, they've got some like solid yeah, oh, I bangers. Do that in incognito. They they've live up to the off. aesthetic they sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got some solid bangers on here. But like, like the I'm pretty sure there's a maid dress that CRJ wanted me to get that like locks in the back, for some reason. What does that even mean? I can't imagine why. Lock. Uh, there's the uh, the panties that say yes, daddy, hearts oh on them. God. Classy. They they sent me a a, a cage that is it looks like a medieval torture device. Like it's got like spikes and shit oh. on it. Oh. <laughs> it's got like a, it's got like a tube that it's it's awful. It Ew. looks awful. Oh no. <laughs> that sounds like... horrible. Good luck. Yeah, it doesn't good fit. Luck. Godspeed. It didn't fit. It didn't fit. <laughs> Damn. It didn't fit. 
Did you do the shoelace trick? The shoelace trick? The shoelace trick. Or is that where you like wrap tie it in a knot or something around? Uh, what, what is the oh, wait, shoelace no, I'm, trick? I'm wholesome. I, I can't talk about that. I'm wholesome. Sometimes the things slip off, trick? and so you gotta tie it around your waist. That's what she means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that really it? Yeah. So is that you what you have it. to do? All right, I'm you wholesome. Can. I've never done this before. Disclaimer. I've never done this before, but you wrap it around your waist and then you like tie it behind like the thingy, right? And then you could do another one like between That's your like... butt cheeks up the sides up to the other <laughs> top of the ca of the shoelace so it holds it all in place and it won't fall off. I've never done that <laughs> the way before. you said butt cheeks is very entertaining. <laughs> butt cheeks. No, so wait a minute. That defeats the whole purpose, though. Like, isn't that kind of like cheating? No, it doesn't, because it holds it into place. Yeah, and but then, then you, you could put just the like thing unravel on, it, and then you lock it, and then it doesn't go anywhere. Some people's packages are a lot lighter than what you're putting on, so you know there's not a lot to grip onto. That's my problem. Is it just slips out, right? It's like it's it's not like I haven't had and some people have okay. People have sent me many of these devices. Many, many, like over 20, I bet. Oh and not a single one of them fit. Sad face. It, it is sad face, but I, I don't understand it. Like, I, like I've like i gotten like the smallest ones, but they don't fucking fit. So you, you tell me you just have to fucking tie a string around it? That's that's dumb. Yeah. That's cheating. That yeah, that's how, that's how you do it. Do you want, that's cheating. When, I, when I get to meet you, IRL, do you want me to, like... <laughs> No, no, I don't. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. No. Not that I would know how to do that or anything. Yeah, not that that thing you would know how to do that or anything like that. That's why I would what? know how to do that. If we were to go down there, do you have an extra guitar? Oh yeah, I have a couple guitars. Hell yeah. Okay. I have a I have a Les Paul, a Gibson Les Paul. I have a fucking, I have a uh, Gibson Flying V2. Jesus. Which is from oh, the 80s. Holy That's shit. That's fucking cool. It is cool as shit, and I bought it for $1,800 like five years ago, and now oh it's worth God. like $5,000. I felt, yeah, I, I I bought like my drum set for like 1500 bucks for just like the four drums, and I thought that was like a really, I thought I paid a lot for it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I have a, I have a. It was, it was completely mismarked though. They had it mismarked as like the model below what oh, it was yeah. at Guitar Center, so they thought lucky. it was like fifteen hundred bucks. It was yeah, actually it was worth lucky. like three thousand. Uh huh. And I, I was like, yeah, I'm buying that. <laughs> worst I, comes to worst, I can always sell it. I got my my guitar from Facebook Marketplace from another college student for like two hundred bucks. That's like it works though, right? Like one hundred percent, yeah. You really don't need an expensive guitar. Like once you get to like five hundred bucks, like that's like the upper limit. Anything just, more than that is just kind of for style. Like I, you yeah. know, like my the V two is a great guitar and I love it. But playing wise, it's not like the best guitar I have. It's um, it's like heavy as shit because it's from the eighties, right? And it's Gibson from the eighties. But it's fucking like you wear that thing on your shoulder and it will hurt. <laughs> It's it's cool though. I think the guy who sold it to me, um, I got it from a shop, and it was his. The guy who owned the shop, it was his personal guitar. Like he was in his collection. He, I guess, he was oh, just wow. selling it. So I got lucky there with finding that one when I did. Yeah, you don't like all drums. Pretty much sound the same. It's just how that's not true. Them. I feel like, like there are a lot of like I listen to a lot of drums, and I'm like, I think that may be a more of a mixing thing. But like, it's more of a some... mixing thing. You can make any drum sound good in the mix. Like in person, you can you can kind of tell a little bit of a difference. But it's like once you mix it, anything can sound yeah. the same. It's just yeah. all in like it's just how much effort you want to do to get it to sound good. I guess that's true. Yeah. I don't know. I I have a, I have a I have a pretty good guitar setup. I've got a Carvin amp XB100 or X100B or whatever it's called. It's pretty fucking. Mm -hmm. I want to build my own tube amp one day. I used to be. That sounds really cool. I used to be really inspired to go and like. I would want to like make a makeshift like, is it like dome around a condenser microphone and just like point it at things and just like record it for the longest time. And so over the years, I've just collected microphone after microphone after microphone for like the excuse to start streaming. But now it's yeah. just like no reason anymore. 
And so now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on my Twitch stream, I just have it to where I stick my microphone out the window and that's like, ha ha, magic, you know? So wait a minute, do you have any tube mics? No, I don't. Those are expensive. Those are like $2,000. I can't. I know. Well, no. I mean, not if you build one yourself. This is a tube mic, but I built it. Oh, I thought you meant a ribbon mic. Sorry. Oh, not you... a ribbon mic. A yeah, ribbon mic. mics are really expensive. Um, yeah. I only have dynamics and condensers. That's a... Well, I mean, it's like a vacuum tube. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. That sounds very unique, though. Does it got one of these bad boys in it? What the hell is that? (laughs) It's a vacuum tube. This is not the same vacuum tube that's in this thing, but... Oh, here we go. Same setup, though. Yeah. It's like there's an actual like 1287 vacuum tube in this microphone. It's on right now. Like I, if I touch this, it's warm, like slightly. Hmm. I love it. <laughs> Shocked myself only a couple times building it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. So that, so that w- this convention's in a in a in a month, right? Yeah. That would be, I would be, I really do want to go to that. I need to, I feel like I have to go to that. What convention is it? The, it's the Orlando Comic Con, I believe. Oh, holy shit. And um, I'm going to be. Yeah, so it's just a mainstream one. I was, so I don't really know how we're going to meet up and everything, but I was going to be staying with a group of friends and we're supposed to spend like the weekend going, going there and back and we're all going to cosplay and things. Maybe you should cosplay if you're going to cosplay. Oh, that, well, of course, if I'm going to come, I'm going to cosplay. That's, like, the whole idea, right? I, I'm going to probably do, like, a whole Astolfo fit or some shit like that. Maybe not Astolfo, but something like that. I'm definitely going to cosplay, like, full on if I do it. If we, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, if we want to do something meet up, we could, like, play music someplace. Or we could just meet up at the convention. It wouldn't matter, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was going to... I, was like, I, gonna I go live your... in the area, so... I think we're like an hour away, maybe less than an hour, but around that. In what direction? I don't know. I. <laughs> They're the ones that are that I'm staying with. They're the ones that also got me the flight, so I'm just not really thinking about it until it gets closer. <laughs> I'm just making <laughs> if sure. If you let me know like where it is, I can like tell you which how is far I am away from that. Still but... available. It's expensive, it but I think there's. Oh yeah, yeah, there is. Can you send me a link to that? Um, might, might have to pick up some of that. General. Yeah, throw that in general. Might have to pick up some tickets for four day longer. price, one hundred ten bucks. Are you going for the four days? Yeah, I got the full package, but I got it. I I bought it like a couple months ago. So wait, wait, you can get family passes for a discount. Can we just say that we're family? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Me and my sister here yeah. would like to go to this pot, this fine uh, establishment. I mean, I I look like a kid, so yeah, so do I. Child pass. Oh, there is child passes. Admission for children ages six to twelve is fifteen bucks. All right, there we go. Ah, oh, too bad y'all look thirteen. Say, Damn. Why does it Damn. say begins in two hundred and fifty-five days? What? Fifteen days? No. Two hundred and fifty-five days. <laughs> Mega oh, yeah, Orlando. Does. Is this the right one? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Me- Mega Con. Mega no, Con this is not Orlando. it. This no, is not it. All right, why, why don't so why don't you get the link and send it to me? Yeah. Sorry, I, I looked up Orlando Comic Con. I thought the first result was going to be reliable. Sorry, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was Comic Con. No, anime, anime Festival. Anime Festival. I know. Thirty-two days. That's that's. That's more like it. Registration. Um, gold pass at the door pass ninety dollars. Shit. Uh, standard pass. So I mean, honestly, like membership rates. Uh, and this guy's last name is a Wang. I don't know. Well, I may fuck. I might, I might just choose like specific days to go. Maybe I'll do like a Saturday and Sunday, or maybe I'll just do the mm. whole the gold pass. That might just be work better. We were planning to do keep like, that in mind. cosplay for like a day or two, but then afterwards just like chill out time because so much work, so much walking. Mm-hmm. Eh. 
Yeah, Thank definitely. You. Uh, I, I could point you to a couple things in around Orlando, I guess. There's a since I know a couple play, cool places around here. Hell yeah, I'm down. More places the better. I don't. I I don't think that my friends know all the places. So you know, the more the merrier, honestly. Yeah, Florida's great. I love I love Florida, specifically Central Florida is really nice. Oh yeah. You should all if we you know I, I keep saying it. We should all just invest. If we all invest a little bit, we could buy a big ass house and have the Fat Boy Commune in the big house, and it would become everywhere. But we could clean it. We could get a little Roomba. <laughs> It would be all right. <laughs> a Roomba to clean it up. The Kumba. If it wasn't Florida, I would be a hundred percent for that. Yeah, if it wasn't in Florida. Florida's not that bad. People like give Florida a bad rap. Really, yeah. it's, it's not as bad as you think. Not, not great. Not great. Didn't they? Didn't Florida. De, didn't DeSantis like just ban like the rainbow colors on everything? I have no Rainbow idea. lights. I don't pay attention. Like the bridge. Ninety percent of what you see on like the news about what's going on in Florida is just bullshit. Like a lot of that is just like articles trying to like scare you. Like oh, there's this bill that had this vague wording that we're gonna interpret to mean this, and then we're gonna create an article saying oh, DeSantis is doing this. But in reality, the actually the the interesting part about it is you know I moved from Iowa, right? Um, which is not the great greatest on stuff like that but i've had a lot easier time getting estrogen and stuff here than i had in iowa like i would say in terms of like trans specifically florida is way better than iowa in comparison but that's i guess that's just like my experience but it's probably because there's me, more anyway. people yeah yeah well in iowa i'd have this problem where i would like um you know i'd run out of estrogen right and i'd, ha I'd go to get my like prescription right and they'd be like oh sorry we're out we don't have any and I would go to every single pharmacy in the area and none of them would have it. So I'd just be fucked. And it's like, <laughs> it's it's like a shitty like experience to go to the store and be like, oh, darn it. They're out yeah. of my hormones. And now I get to like feel like absolute shit for the next month because I didn't get my hormone dosage on time. And then the person behind the counter says it really loud like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Your estrogen isn't in <laughs> stock. And then everyone looks at you. Yeah, yeah that's why it's I just, just get a mail order. It's, it's so much mail less than a bad idea. idea. But you know, it's like here in Florida, I've had literally no problems with it, and it's like my endocrinologist here seems like they know a lot more about what they're doing and talking about than my endocrinologist in Iowa did. Which I like my endocrinologist in, endocrinologist in Iowa. They just didn't seem as experienced, you know. Yeah, there's probably more people in Florida. Oh yeah, it's a lot more people in Florida. Mm -hmm. Informed consent, baby. I don't know, man. It's uh, Florida's pretty great. I like Florida a lot. <laughs> I've been through a lot I, of the southern I states. About moving. My uh, my family is half of my family is from like Louisiana and like the backwoods. Oh, yeah. And, Louisiana. Yeah. I don't know. I I think I've had my fill of the South for a lifetime. There's always something very. There's always something like missing about it. I like urban areas more. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of like, I don't want to live like in the city, but I also don't want to live in the country either. Like, someplace in like the suburbs, like right in the middle. You like where the suburbs? Like yeah. <laughs> public transportation. Yeah. Basically. You're kind of like, yeah, kind of like where I live. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one thing that's really cool about Pittsburgh is that like you can go literally 10 minutes out of the city and be in farms. Like, there's just literally nothing there, but it's a 10 minute drive into the city to go to like yeah. all the restaurants and everything. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way it is here, too, is there's a lot of, like, mm. empty wilderness, but you're never that far away from anything, really. You're kind of just, like, all of it's... You're never tw more than 20 minutes away from a Dollar General. Mm. Ever. In yeah, the you're state. never, like, 10 minutes away from one here. I think I prefer to... <laughs> They're everywhere. Literally everywhere. I think the outer outskirts of a city is, like, perfect, because it's urban enough to where yeah, there's... Right it's dense enough but it's not as like secluded as um as the suburbs because with the suburb you need like a car while like the outskirts of cities you can still walk around and get around like to a degree and having a car yeah. is great of course yeah you kind of need a car in florida that is a thing 
I don't know. I, I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't call Florida the, like, Florida's the South, but it's kind of different, you know what I mean? It's not the South South. Like, there's a difference between, like, Louisiana South and Florida you South. Keep, you keep trying to defend yourself. It's not working. It'll, Florida's definitely I would the defend South. my state. <laughs> you can get gator bites. I, I live in yeah. Virginia. I, see? It's the South for me. It's literally the yeah, South. see? Gators. I, it's not gators are not scary. They're they're really not. Like I'm also gonna be tasty. honest. That's what I was saying. Oh, you get oh, oh you get tasty. Gator I don't, I've never had gators can bite you. No, I haven't eaten no. I haven't I haven't tried gator. Maybe I should, but it's it's not gators are not scary. They're cute. They're, they're they float in the water, they're like this and they just kind of float around. Until they, they, they jump out and they try and they don't jump out. Off. That's not what they do. They're very they don't they, unless you fuck with them they they won't fuck with you i i remember taking a tour um in one of the swamps down in uh, folsom louisiana and we took an airboat uh, across the swamp and checked out a lot of the i want to say alligators i mean I, I feel like there's a difference between alligator and um crocodile i, I can't remember the yeah, difference um but i don't know i wouldn't jump in there <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you would I, you wouldn't jump in there, but like most alligators, at least the ones that I've seen, aren't that big. Like they they wouldn't go for a human just because we're too big. So if you're walking, it is a genuine thing where you shouldn't walk your dog next to a lake. Um, yeah, cause they might they might come out and chomp the dog. But that's that's it. Like they're not really that big of a deal. And the main issue is like if you're going up there and you're fuck with it, you're poking it, then you might act. He might fuck with you just because he's like leave me the hell alone but typically like alligators really aren't that scary florida reminds me of like australia in a way where you can get bugs in the tiniest corners of everything and then just be like jump scared by by a random animal just walking by somewhere it is kind of wild here there's a lot of animals like a lot of wildlife like i came from iowa where the extent of our wildlife was squirrels and crows and maybe a pigeon <laughs> But that it, down here, there's like cranes, there's monkeys, there's monkeys in here. There's monkeys. There, there's genuine wild monkeys in Florida. All right, so that's a reason to move to Florida. Th this th this forest right back here, uh -huh. there's a good chance that there are monkeys in there. Okay, that's actually pretty fucking cool. It, it's like I'm not lying. <laughs> there's like it, it's a thing too. Like specifically recently, there's been an uptick in sightings of like macaque monkeys in Central Florida. So it's like I'm right in the area where they're at too. With with your background, I'm not surprised. What the the fucking the the jungle back there? You're you're literally pointing to the side of a jungle, and it's the background. Yeah, you are. Yeah. It, it it is like oh I mean oh yeah with the background <laughs> with my like Discord background. <laughs> I forgot you guys aren't looking at my camera. <laughs> you can't see the 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 window I'm pointing to. I actually thought about moving um, a little while ago. Like, before I even met you, Soka, I had actually thought about moving to D.C. Um, because there's a whole bunch of, like, cushy government jobs there. 100. For yeah. engineers. Government jobs. There's a lot of cushy there's government goddamn jobs. goddamn feds. Especially Ashburn, yeah. Feddy boys. Yeah. Goddamn so feds. Like, I had thought about moving there, like, a while ago, but I just can't justify it. Houses are too expensive. It's... Yeah, it's... It's terrible, especially Northern Virginia. It's mostly filled up with like middle-aged, like senior engineers and middle managers that make too much yeah. money. Cushy government engineers that make too much money, which is why it, I want that job. It seems like a lot of those jobs are held by old people who really don't want to give them up though. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, there's a lot of, yep. like the jobs are there, but it's kind of like old people looking out for old people. Yeah, the thing, the there's, thing. there's none in the middle, right? You either have people that are, like, brand new in, like, the shitty revolving door jobs, and then you have, like, the old people that just will not retire. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's never, like, an in-between. Which I'm 78 years old. I'm totally perfectly fine to <laughs> run this aspect of our government. <laughs> These goddamn redcoats won't tax us again, I promise you. <laughs> we should start another civil war. <laughs> Fucking... Where's the bag? Much. Where's the tea? I'm gonna throw it in the water. Yeah. <laughs> what I've noticed too is that a lot of government jobs don't really incite any form of firing. It's just the the contracting company makes money 
because they filled the position. So, extra incentive to not get rid of anyone. Yeah. No, yeah. Yes. From my experience, that's about it. It is kind of hard to get outright fired from a government job. But it is possible. So what you're saying is you want to go work for the federal bussy investigators? Yes. Do they give you, like, a vest that glows when you get that job? <laughs> no, that's the CIA. Oh, it's, oh my bad. Yeah, the, um, the, the cunny, um, it, the come in ass inspector. I don't know where I was going with that. The, the come in <laughs> ass inspector? <laughs> come in ass, the come in ass association. The CIA. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh god. What is this devolved into? What is this podcast devolved into? Remember when I was a wholesome streamer? Remember when everybody was a wholesome streamer? Actually I was never wholesome. I stood in on Fortune. I never I could never claim that I was ever wholesome. No. Oh I, by the I, way, I'm a I'm on a mission from one of my moderators to ask you what I heart Jerusalem means. God damn it, why does everyone fucking keep asking about that? God damn pen. Hey, listen. Okay. Listen. It was listen. one of my mods that is also one of your mods. This is all you need to know. Right here. What this is, is this? This is the best sex toy you'll ever have. It's all you need to know. It's all you need to, It's a pen, but it's not a pen. But it is a pen. But it's not a pen. But it is a pen. And, and where had a does couple Jerusalem of fit into this? Okay, well, okay. <sighs> I, okay. I got one as a gift a long okay. time ago a pen just like this and this is a snow globe pen this is like it has a little light up thing in it and it lights up and you write with it it's a little it's a little snow globe in there right okay um uh and it but it just so happens to be that it's the perfect size and shape to be like oh, the best like God. yeah it, it's, okay it's the best okay. tool for the job let's just okay. say that and so that's, I had an I Heart Jerusalem, that was the main one I had, was an I Heart Jerusalem one. And then I, I brought it up on stream, and then my, my chat, like, found the company that makes them. And there were, someone was able to send me, like, a, a whole box of, of the Aloha ones. So I have a, a whole bunch of the yellow Aloha ones, which are slightly different. I don't know where the original I Heart Jerusalem one went. I don't know. I'm, I'm glad I asked about that. I, every time someone like asks that in chat, I'm like, why am I being asked major political implication question? Oh, they're talking yeah, about the pen. It came, it came into my stream one time, or I, I forget how, but I, I mentioned I needed a pen or something like that. And somebody said, make sure you ask Astra about Jerusalem. And I was like, what? <laughs> What 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 kind of what fucking, is the like, context here? What, what are you and trying to implicate me, me in? <laughs> I'm glad I asked that question now, except I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Everybody always asks, what the fuck is the deal with the pen? I'm like, I don't want to say. <laughs> I, I'm just so scared that eventually my, my grandma will find out the, the lore of the pen, and I'll just feel so awful. <laughs> yeah, I'm always like, kind of worried my mom's going to find my stream. Because she does watch <laughs> Twitch streams. Oh, she does? You're yeah, fine. she. I don't know if on Twitch streams, but she watches a couple people on YouTube that like uh, I guess stream, it's and it so always bad. makes me really worried that like she's gonna come into my stream, and I'm worried that like if I tell my parents that I stream on Twitch, they're gonna be like, "Oh, what is your Twitch stream? Uh, we're gonna come and watch you." Are they and like tech like, savvy? Uh, Do they like know how to find somebody on Twitch? I don't know. It's like my I, mom I can... watches my mom watches like Animal Crossing streamers though cuz she's like the biggest Animal Crossing nerd. Aww. So probably not. Yeah, my mom's like I am she like I, I don't really care if I tell her like my whole like I, I even told her my like stream handle. I don't think I don't think she would like know how to go to Twitch and find me, so I'm not super worried about that. But my sister does watch my streams though and she like pops in and like comes in my chat. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I've had a couple IRL friends pop in that, like, yeah. know about this. I don't think I've had any previous IRL friends. Have you had any awkward stories about people finding your stream, Soko? Um, 
No. Honestly, not really. Because most of the time, I'm the one to tell them, like, hey, I'm a femboy streamer on Twitch, check me out. And oh, I don't, okay, okay. I'm not particularly awkward about it. Um, I Have you told your parents about it? I, so, my mom does not really know anything about the internet. She's like, she's the type of person to where if she were to see any of us do what we do, she would immediately start linking, like, Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh videos for us mm. to like learn our how to learn mm -hmm. to be normal. Yeah. And then, and then my have you dad. Seen that video is, of Ben Shapiro watching the Catboy video, and he's just like, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wet ass pussy. Wait, I shouldn't say that on on, on YouTube. Uh, oh, you can say I don't care. Is that okay? You can swear. Wet ass p word. Wet um, ass pussy. You got that wet ass pussy. We don't get monetized here. <laughs> and, and it's not uh, my channel that's getting demonetized. It was, listen, I my channel isn't monetized. This is the fanboy podcast. You think this shit's getting monetized? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my dad is like, he's he's like the most stereotypical like expat expat like navy dude. So he's always looking at how other people are living in like Thailand or like the Philippines and. Mostly looking for retirement. His ass ain't worried about me in that way. Oh, uh, so he's gonna go try and retire in the Philippines? He wants to move to like Thailand or somewhere. It's honestly oh, really nice. Oh, so huh? he's into the Lady Boys. So he wants to move to where ah. the land of the Lady Boys. I see. No, he's already married. He already remarried. Then why would you move to Thailand? <laughs> it's like the only <laughs> reason to have move you, to Thailand. Have you ever had really good Thai food? No, I want to though. See. All right, can I talk? You want dimension. to tell the story? The that's problem with that mess. that I have with that is that we have the recipe. We could just make it. Do you have gungalow root? Do you know what gungalow root is? Yes. It's. It is the base <laughs> vegetable for tum yum soup. It's like what makes it really fucking deep and good. But could you not grow that here or buy it here? Maybe, but I mean, all the ingredients and like the balancing, the balancing and things. Unless I don't know if Florida has a lot of, um, you know, like H Mart or like Asian markets. Oh yeah, we do. We, you know, it's Florida's kind of a melting pot of society. So there's a there's always like there's a lot of Cuban stuff here, but there's also a lot of um, Asian stuff as well. So there's, there's definitely, especially like in around in and around Orlando, there's a lot of stuff like that. Where, where I live, but the other thing like... is like. <laughs> Excuse me. What? Well, where I live, there's like a population of H marts everywhere. So there's Korean. There's like it's like a Korean mart. Every single every single county, it's it's pretty convenient. Yeah. That's Can I nice. tell the Thai food story, Soko? Oh yeah. Oh. So, we um when we met last weekend, we were looking for uh Thai food, and so Yumi no Zen was was also with us. And she had like um, her like smart Android CarPlay, and she went, "Okay, okay, Google, find Thai food near me." And Google said, "Okay, tie me up." <laughs> the restaurant's name was called Tie Me Up. It was not great. Siri it was, it was getting pretty kinky up in here. Ooh, oh, Siri, be here. Oh, what, what was the place that was also near it? What were they called? Do you remember? Um... It was like Jerry's or like Jersey's something. It was like a uh, like a um, laundry mat, but it was also named really sus. Oh, and it was like yeah. right next to each really other. It was a really sus name. Yeah, yeah, it was right next to the laundromat. I feel like they both owned the, I feel like it was owned by the same person and they just like went all out on the names, but didn't really go much into like. They probably started with the laundry mat first, then made the Thai restaurant. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I really want to like try Thai food, and and there's a lot of food I want to try. I haven't had like I want to go to India and have real Indian curry. I want to have. I want to do like, that too. Yeah, I want to go to. Um, I, I really want to go to Japan because I, I, I feel really like I have to. Japan too. I feel like I have to go to Japan because I have a sister that lives there and no one's visited her yet, and I feel like that's sad. Oh shit! So I need to go. What part of yeah. Japan? She lives in Kyoto. So oh, she damn. used to live in. That's really cool. 
Yeah, she used to live in Nagano, but uh, she moved to a couple years ago to Kyoto, and she's like, she's getting her like undergrad, or she's getting her like masters there, and she's like, speaks the language like so fluently at this point. It's mm. weird. That's wicked. That's actually. She's lived there for like seven years, I think. Do you uh, do you have a specific place you want to go in Japan? I want to go to all over Japan. I want to go to the. I want to visit Hokkaido. I want to visit. Um, all, like the southern islands uh i really want to visit the whole thing i specifically want to visit kyoto obviously just to visit my sister but um other than that i really want to go see the yamato museum and um i forget where that is but it's the it's the southern it's more south part of the, the country and then i also want to go see hokkaido and i want to see like i basically just everything oh yeah mm-hmm. Last... i want to go to rome one day too Last time I was there, went through like Hiroshima, Kyoto, Tokyo, as well as um, I forget it was like just south of where the uh, things like just south of Fukushima, where like the mm. uh, it was during when the power plant, ex- yeah. not like exploded, oh, but shit. like when it got hit with the with the wave and things. It wasn't. It really was not not as bad as people anticipated. But yeah, if you're wasn't there like a city that got abandoned? Uh, wasn't yeah, they like a. It was like the surrounding area, I believe. But yeah. I didn't get that close. It was just like within the same region. Hmm. Um. I see. If you're comfortable, like you can take hostels and go around. That's what I did. It's and there's like public you know, uh, springs and everything you can check out. That, that's one of my bucket list items too: is to go to the public hot springs. There's a, you can also go camping in Japan, which is what my parents did. They, they used to do that a long time ago. And it's like, you camp out near the side of like a, a park and things, and you uh, like cook out and you're like right underneath Mount, um, Mount Fuji. And you can go to like hot wow. springs there and everything. It's beautiful. It's marvelous. Cool. Your parents are so cool. My dad's like a little retired grumpy guy that fishes and plays golf every day. I want to go like to like the bathhouse and like see what happens when I try to go in the male bath like house. <laughs> I want to see what happens. I, I want to like I don't know what would happen, but I'm int- that would be funny. My my main problem with going to Japan is it's so expensive. It's like two grand just to yeah, go there. Yeah, that's really expensive. My big concern would be like if I didn't know the language and I was put in a situation where I had to know the language. Like I know you can get by with knowing not a lot of Japanese, but like my big concern would be if I was like stranded somewhere and I'd be like, get me back home, and I couldn't. Well, unless you go to, like, a really, really rural place, pretty much everybody there knows a little English, and everybody knows yeah. that you would be a... F- Since you're white, everyone would be, would, would be like, oh, you're a foreigner? Oh, I n- understand that you don't know my language, right? <laughs> they're like, they, they... It's like, Japan is enough of a tourist country where I imagine they get it enough, where it's like, okay, uh-huh. yeah, this like, okay, he, let me let me help you here. <laughs> uh, but, like, you know, and I guess that's, like, I'm not so worried about that, because, like, for me, I would just be with my sister, and she's fluent, so... The cool thing about most Asian countries is that um, everyone who's under 30, I'd say, or probably under 40 at this point, they learn English as a curriculum in school. So everyone is by Mm -hmm. default bilingual. Mm -hmm. And even, it's really funny, I even, um, I was trying to to refill my Metro card, or um, I forget where where I was, I think it was in Kyoto. And I was like, I was having trouble with the machine. I couldn't, you know, I can't read, I can't read hiragana or like kanji or anything. And so there was this like eight year old kid just like grabbed me by my hand and he was like pointing. I was like, come on, come. And like <laughs> dragged me to the office, explained yeah. to them the problem. They got it fixed. And, and the kid was like, here you go. And it was like nodding and everything. Oh, it was, so it was really cute. Everyone is very, very helpful if, um, yeah. Japanese people are so like nice and respectful. It always pisses yeah. me off when I see like foreigners going over there being loud and like being like bringing like the American like culture over there. It's like I, I that's my main thing about it. It's like if I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna try to be like as respect as respectful of like the culture as I can be. You know, there's I I, I only experienced 
I was there. So the last time I was there, I was there for like two and a half weeks, and、mm-hmm. I only experienced racism like one time, where it felt off. But it was most. But it was like from a very elderly couple, and it was like we're standing at the the metro stop, and I was like, "Sumi my son, like this, this. Do you know? You know, just pointing at the map, <laughs> and and they just kind of like stared." Yeah, with like a very stern face, it felt it felt very weird. Maybe it wasn't racism, but they definitely did not want to talk to us. Very yeah, strange. I mean, there are they are very xenophobic. That is true. Like,、yeah. I feel like if you're a tourist and you're being respectful, they like that and they like Americans, but they typically don't want you to be like. They don't like people moving there. Like my sister has has to deal with a lot of that. Like she's she had a really hard time finding an apartment because a lot of apartments just straight up won't rent to foreigners at all. She's lived there for seven years, knows the language perfectly, and is fully integrated in their culture. But even still, it's like people will be like, "Oh, you're a foreigner," you know.、Wow. It's like they are very xenophobic over there, which is interesting. Yeah. I still want to go though. <laughs> yeah, I. Item. At some point, I want to take a scooter, and go around China. I feel like that would be an amazing experience. I want to do that in Vietnam.、Mm. They did that on Top Gear, I think.、Yeah. There's an episode about that. That's, I mean, that does seem fun. Like just on a little scooter, on a little tuk tuk, going around. Uh, that it, would that, seem kind of fun, but、eh, it, it is China. I don't, I don't know about China. I wouldn't go in China because China's a little. They bit may like kill you. Yeah, yeah. China's a little bit.、Uh, maybe not right now. Like maybe ten years ago, but China right now is a little bit on edge. They just they're like that friend that just you smoked a little bit too much crack and now you're a little bit like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've always noticed that. When it comes to very community orientated community、uh, community orientated societies, as long as you're very respectful respectful to everybody, that's like、mm-hmm. really the one way you can stay out of trouble than anything. Well, I'm not so much worried about like the people in China. It's more so the, like the government. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're very they're China, a little bit sus. Chinese government is a little bit like. <laughs> You you said what about our government? How would you like the jail cell? <laughs> It's like let's not talk about the horrible things that our government has done. Luckily, we are not political commentators. Luckily, we are not. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are not political agitators here.、Mm-hmm. No politics. I, sometimes on, on small man, my chat gets me going. Sometimes I I come I fly real close to the sun. You ever like talk about politics on your stream? And being like, no talking about politics. Anyway, let me talk about politics. I actually don't talk about politics like at all. Honestly, I try not like, to. Sometimes、ever. I do, but like it's、yeah. kind of hard to avoid. Sometimes it's hard to avoid given being a femboy. I think being a femboy is kind of inherently political. I try to avoid it as much as I can, but like sometimes someone will piss me off, and I'll just be like, "You fucking asshole." <laughs> I do. I I'm pretty direct about talking about that kind of stuff. Although I keep it within context because a lot of people can make it to where oh you're defend oh so you're defending this oh so you're defending that just like internet brain rotting people who come in and get distracted by their own ghosts that they see yeah like you're never gonna win in a political debate and I'm like the scuffed femboy drummer so my opinion is irrelevant anyway. Yeah, I, I mean I, I just don't、fair. talk about it. No, no,、yeah. <laughs> no to、uh, what is it? <laughs> Uh, no debate perfectry. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's like I I feel like it's a little bit harder for me because I got I'm a lot of my content is gun focused and that brings in the obvious like gun problem where people are just like some people really 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 hate guns and they don't think anybody should have them and so it's like they'll come into my stream and be like oh why you shouldn't have that and I'm like <laughs> yeah but I do. The only debate、yeah. we have is which is better ACDC or Metallica. Oh fuck ACDC! I hate ACDC. Fuck Metallica.、Uh, What? ACDC's the fucking best. Mars Volta. Mar- <sighs> Mars Volta is、Dude. better than either of them. Yeah.、Mars、no, Volta is Metallica、really、is better than Mar- Mars Volta. Mars Volta is better than ACDC though. ACDC just like I'm bad. 
But I am Ricky Blake. When I was, <laughs> when it's I was, just, a, it's the whole thing. <laughs> when I, I was a little it. kid, I was, I was thinking I was in like seventh grade or something like that. My dad took me to see <laughs> ACDC live, Whoop. right? Like they played a show in Pittsburgh. It was so fucking good. Love just watching a geriatric old man do, dance around. Yeah, there on was stage. there was literally like five geriatric old men on stage, and it was fucking great. Yeah. I hate I hate ACDC, man. I, I really I really do hate ACDC. There's a Neil Ciciagor cover where they or he did a match matchup of like, um, what's that song? It's like making my way downtown. That's you know that song. Yeah. They did a mashup of that and ACDC lyrics, and once you hear that song, you cannot ever listen to ACDC again without hearing <laughs> that just awful voice. Like the <laughs> vocals on ACDC are so ear piercingly bad and annoying that it pisses me off. No. It's like I don't why why is why is ah! like a good <laughs> vocal? It's, ah, God damn it! <laughs> Guns and Roses and ACDC. Send me into a primal rage. Guns N' Roses. Like, anytime... All right, I will. I will contend you on this. Guns N' Roses made the best rock album of the '80s, and just dipped right after that. And never made anything else good. Ow, ow, they had ow, one ow. good album. Ow wow. <laughs> That's all I do. I fucking hate it. Guns N' Roses. If I'm listening to the radio, there are only two bands that I will immediately turn the radio off no matter what, and it's ACDC and Guns N' Roses. I'll hear that, that nasally, ow, wow, or the, the fucking awful, like, yay, and I'll just immediately turn it off. I'm just like, fuck that. Nope. Not listening to that you watch, shit. You, let, you listen to Metallica. Metallica's good. I don't know what you're talking about. Metallica kicks ass. Metallica is like objectively the best metal band of the like past couple centuries. I mean, like, okay, objectively they have to be because like they've sold the most. Yeah, like they, but, they, okay, they're I'll fucking, give you that. Let, compare Megadeth's most recent album to Metallica's most recent album. Seventy-two seasons slaps. I didn't even know Megadeth made another album. Oh, I didn't even know albums. Dave Mustaine was still like making music. How, he's always been making music. They had uh, David Ellison, the the bassist, had a little oopsie daisy where he jerked off on like webcam one uh, with like some girl, and he got <laughs> turbo canceled for it. So Dave was like, so like David Ellison like had a yeah, fight out with it. Dave in the eighty or in the mid two thousands, then they made up, and then this shit happened, and now Dave's or David Ellison's back out of the van and then they made a new album with iced tea and it sucked <laughs> and then and then <laughs> with okay, iced tea yeah with iced Wait, tea they did, they did a cover with or they did a, a song with iced tea as guest vocals and then metallica created 72 seasons and it was just like ah this is better this it's is the most better. random combination megadeth slaps when megadeth is trying was very desperate to not make shit and I like Megadeth in those instances, but when Megadeth gets too comfortable and creating the same bullshit over and over again, it gets really sloppy. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> What's your I'll... favorite band, other than Mars Volta, Soka? That's pretty hard. I have I, I grew up listening to the Mars Volta as like a coping band, and still listen to them, and like discovering new stuff every time. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean. I, I, it's not really just like, just rock music. There's like specific songs from specific bands. I'm not like a diehard. Really, yeah, the Mars Volta is the only way. one, yeah. because I can just return back to it and I know more or less what to expect. And mm -hmm. I fucking love Cassandra Gemini. I wish my name was Cassandra. Like, goddamn. Um, it's you could change it. You could I just change it. that band is just beyond words. Um, I like uh, I like I like Pink Floyd a lot. Pink Floyd goes hard. I I used to be a big fan of like of like uh, like Pendulum, um, My Chemical Romance, Motionless and White. Oh. Um, Motionless and White goes hard. Chevelle is also pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, into any, I'm like a huge romance. nostalgia nerd. So like anything in like the early two thousands is my vibe, like yeah. old school Disturbed, like what, what, Breaking Benjamin. 
What did you think of that Linkin Park song that got released a couple years ago? That was like was after really after yeah. the guy um, died. That was I, I thought was that, that was song? a banger. Yeah, that song was really good. I forget the name of it. I I'm not a big uh, Linkin Park fan, but that song slaps. Mm. Last time I heard a Linkin Park song was from the Transformers soundtrack. <laughs> that song was really good too. <laughs> Fuck you. The song, the Transformers with uh, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. The good Transformer. I don't know the if it's a good Trans Transformers. I, that was the one where it showed like the one, the one like giant one on the it? pyramid with like balls hanging down. I Maybe mean, I'm thinking of another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like using like a like, was it like a racist epitome to like black and Chinese people? You gotta love Michael Bay. I, I, okay, maybe I'm thinking of another one then. I don't know. I haven't watched the, the first one. Is like the only like, time. in my opinion, the only good one. But then again, it even mm -hmm. still had. Oh fuck, Michael Bay. Anyways, <laughs> I, I I can't. I, I never really got into the Transformers. Like I know people who are like into Transformers, but they I guess you had to watch it when you were like a kid in the '80s or some shit like that to really get into it. It was it was a spectacle for the time because I think. Like, good CGI was still coming about. I forget when it came out. Maybe it came in the 2010s, maybe early than, like, mid-2000s like or something. something like that. The first time yeah, seeing it, it was like pretty it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't know when that came out. I don't know. I've been watching... I didn't used to watch a lot of movies, but I, I watch a lot of movies now because my boyfriend is, like, a big movie head. And so, like, I've seen a lot of movies, but... I don't I'm know. I'm a I, big uh, movie person either. I mean, I, I didn't watch used a movie, to be. but eh. Have I you seen Blazing Saddles? Days. Have I seen what? Blazing Saddles. That movie's great. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing that as a kid. <laughs> My dad loved that movie. It's like, have you seen Blazing Saddles? I love the part where they just like flip over the fake horse. That's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, a um, I love growing up as a kid. So I much. had growing up as a kid. I had like a it was a two part DVD thing that my parents bought at like the dollar store. There was that on it, and then there was Monty Python and the Holy Grail on, like, Damn. the same Python DVD. Slaps. That movie was so good. Damn. How long does it take a lady in Toronto to fly hundred miles? <laughs> African or European? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you two. Um, uh -huh. Star Wars or Dune? I haven't seen Dune. I'm a big I I hate Star Wars, but I love Star Wars. Like I'm a big Star Wars fan, but I fucking hate Star Wars. Cuz yeah, how I've much seen they Star fuck it Wars. up. I'm not a big Star Wars fan. I've never seen I, Dune. I got really hard so. into Star Wars like okay. a couple like a year ago, but I haven't seen Dune. Wrong, wrong. I had a friend who really like said watch it, but Wrong question then. Uh Star Wars or Star Trek? Since none of you saw Dune. Star Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. <sighs> There's too I, much in Star Trek. I, I don't know. I just can't get into Star Trek because it's like, to be honest with you, I got so invested in Star Wars and the lore of Star Wars. Like, I got like into it because like, once you watch like, if you watch it from like episode one to the entirety of the Clone Wars three, the Bad Batch, uh, the Rebels, and then the Ahsoka shit, and the Man then the Mandal or the Mandalorian, and then the Ahsoka shit. Like, if you watch all of that. With all of like the Dave, anything that Dave Filoni has touched, he's got his grubby little hands on. It's fucking great. <laughs> anything else besides, um, the other one, the Rogue One guy? That that is a really good storyline. But everything else fucking sucks. Like the Kenobi show is kind of bad. The fucking sequels are absolute ass and don't. I fucking refuse to accept that they're canon. Like anything that Disney does with Star yeah, Wars mostly Disney sucks. Bought them. Not really, though, because, like, they've done a lot of good stuff since, right? Like, the Rogue One story, the, the show that they made after Rogue oh, One. Oh, yeah, Rogue One prequel. was good. Rogue One was a great movie, saw, but... The, well, I only think I they, saw part of Rogue One. Rogue One is great. Good. They made a sequel to it, like, the pre... This, they made a series about, like, the guy who's in Rogue One, and it is one of the best, like, pieces of Star Wars, like... Like, TV show I've ever seen. But other than that, it's like they they really like keep fucking it up, and I just it pisses me off. And it's like God I can damn, never get into suck. Star Trek. There's just too much to it. Like yeah, there's like I, I fifty just... million years of lore that you have to catch up on, and it's like yeah, or it's like, I could just not. 40K. If y'all are really interested in the lore behind things, 
And Astra, the way you're describing it, I feel like y'all would really like Dune because it talks more of like the dynamics between empires and the actions and conflicts between them all. While actually, in my opinion, when I see watch Star Trek, it's like, depending on the episodes, especially like Next Generation, for example, they touch on very interesting ideas that would not exist in the real world, but exist in the universe. And so it kind of like plays, it kind of plays out specific events in, um, as a showcase for, for the concept that they're kind of like presenting like the theme or like the motif of the, of the episode. That's what I like about Star Trek, but I feel like y'all yeah. would like, really like Dune by the way I you're describing, have... um, having to be inter I... into, into the lore yeah. and everything. I had a friend who was really, really into Dune and who was like, you gotta watch Dune, you gotta watch Dune. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to watch it, but like he described it in a way where he's like, you can't just watch it. You gotta like get immersed in it. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I gotta like buy, I'm gonna like wait until I eventually have enough money to buy that VR headset I want. And then I'll just buy it and watch it in the big screen beyond. I think that'd be sick. Oh, no, be you cool, don't gotta do actually. that. <laughs> See, the cool thing is that the director or both Dunes was also the director for Cyberpunk 20, I think 20, was 2032? It? No, no, not Cyberpunk. Uh, Blade Runner 2049. I haven't seen that one. The first Blade Runner sucked. So the first one is definitely like, you know, it's more of like a taste. With Harrison Ford? I that feel movie like, sucked. It's, People love that movie. That movie sucks. I personally really liked that movie it's like it's a vibe but the new one it's a vibe but god damn the whole fucking movie is just like let me chase this robot and get my ass beat for the whole movie and at the very end he runs out of battery <laughs> don't it. spoil it i wasn't gonna too, watch it's it too anyway. late i spoiled it that's the whole fucking movie you don't need to go watch it now jamie, jamie a... bleep it out <laughs> jamie bleeps that out the cool thing about the newer one is that it's shot in such a beautiful manner like every frame a picture I do want to see the new one. Did you I, just I, eat a hot sauce? You didn't know that's the thing I did? No. You see this this bottle? Yeah. It used to be like, was like full like a week or two ago. And I just keep, I, I'm like addicted to it. Sorry to interrupt you, Soko. I just. I oh, know, I had to see this too. <laughs> you no, know, it's like, it's a thing I do. Like I, I used, like I have a, I used to have a Tapatio emote because I used to drink solely Tapatio. And I, I tried this crystal. And it tastes more like Frank's because it's got cayenne, and I really, I really fuck with Frank. So I, uh, I started drinking it, and then I got addicted to it, and now I can't stop. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I kicked this habit for a little bit, and now I'm like, I thought I was weird. Give me my hot sauce. Anyway, Sorry, as you were, as you were. What are you saying, Soko? <laughs> um, so like, I feel like you would, if if you really like beautifully shot. Do you, I mean, okay, the newer, to be completely honest, the newer Star, uh, Star Wars, it looks fantastic. I yeah, mean, it, it has high production value. The graphics look great. Yeah. But then. Yeah, it's a good, visually appealing. But then the mm -hmm. stories are incredibly, like, disjointed. Everyone's acting feels just like a script. It feels weird. Um, I really don't like the direction that a lot of Disney films go, where it's like, it originally was I think like 80% story and like 20% singing and now it's completely flipped and so it's like everything is more like a build up to and like a depression after and they really they really like shot themselves in the foot every time with these recent films but mm. with Dune um, I, I, I've rewatched both the new ones twice at this point and oh my god is it an incredibly self contained story like it's incredibly well self-contained and yeah. references that you I've missed them... you'll be able to rewatch and you'll catch it and it'll make even more sense and it'll be like it's amazing <laughs> i've heard they're really good i've yeah, just never gotten that. into the dune the dune my dad more. hates them but you know <laughs> he, he, he doesn't know shit yeah I, yeah, I, I really, I, I need to watch Dune, like, I, I like especially because my friend was, was into it. Um, like, I, I really feel like I want to, I want to, like, watch it because of that. But I, I want to make sure when I watch it that I'm, like, prepared to sit down. Because I know it's a long, because I'm going to just watch them both back to back. I, I feel like that's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. 
you know because yeah. everyone tells me like the ep- the first movie is just building up to the second movie so i yep. don't really want to watch the first movie then stop and then watch the movie a couple days later i just want to do a full like eight hour log just okay let's strap on the vr headset and just like smoke a lot of weed and just be like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> you want to do it that way yeah okay i feel I like i i feel like if i were to redo it my, redo my first time i'll get a projector i point it at the ceiling and i'll just lay down there for the entire time and watch that would work too i don't have a projector though mm-hmm. then again i don't have a vr headset either shit it's fine <laughs> as long as you got a good pair of headphones the freaking sound is also sound design is also fantastic yeah i've got nice headphones i got these uh i overpaid for these mm-hmm. great i spent too much on them airpods i didn't know I didn't overpay. AirPods are so <laughs> fucking AirPods. AirPods. I lost my AirPod, bro. Oh boy. Oh no, I'm wait, kidding. no, these aren't AirPods. These are um earpods, I think they call them. The wired ones that come with your phone. Oh yeah. Those are the for the poor peasants. Yeah. You peasant where well, you don't have the newest Apple. I don't have product. the newest hundred and fifty dollar no. You don't have the newest fourteen hundred dollar iPhone that does the exact same thing. No, this is like five years old. Yo, the iPhone cameras are actually baller though. I'll they totally just really I'll just buy a camera. I'll buy just an iPhone, not even have data, just use it as a camera, and like a content yeah, like, creation thing. But this thing has like a really good camera too, and this thing was really cheap. Like this is the cheapest Chinese phone like on the market. It's like under three hundred dollars, and it's got a two hundred mex- megapixel camera like it's fairly like a competent phone for what it is like Mm -hmm. so when it comes to megapixels it's not entirely based around megapixels it's also about like the way it's processed and the class that they use like this camera here that i'm using is 24 and and yet it looks this sharp and Mm -hmm. so like there's a lot of ai that actually does come into phone cameras nowadays because of how limited bits of space they have and that's actually yeah, what makes the say, Apple phone so good. I was going to say, like, all cameras are kind of, like, similar. It's just, like, what what software they use to take pictures with them. I just but hate Apple. This is... <laughs> Fair. Okay, this is, like, a four-year-old iPhone. And I was taking pictures with it. Like, they look perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I mean, not, I, not as good as yours, obviously. But you were using, like, a, a huge, nice camera. Oh, mm-hmm. well, yeah. There's, like, a difference in hardware, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I uh I got a new phone and then I I left it on the roof of my car and then Ooh, I drove do off it. and then I had to get another new phone and I felt really bad. <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> and oh, I had to get another so phone. sorry to hear that. <laughs> it was brutal because like I was on the way back from a really like depressing long weekend and then I like was five minutes away from my house and then my car broke down and I was like fuck and then I like. It was trying to get it started, and I accidentally left my phone on the roof, and then I got it started, so I was like, alright, let's go, 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 and I just didn't think to take my phone off the roof, and then I, like, had to go back there, like, the next day to <laughs> walk through the field and be like, where's my phone? <laughs> you seem to have a lot of issues with cars breaking down. My car is a little bit of a stinker. It's, uh, it's got a little attitude issues sometimes, but that's mm-hmm. mainly because I'm just, like, too broke to, like, put money into it. I mean, really, it just needs a, a solid service, like, and then it would be fine. But, you know, which is something you'd have to do to, like, a normal new car anyway. It's just that I haven't done that. that I don't think this car has been serviced for its entire life, and it's four years. Oh, my ago, God. So. The tires I took off of it when I first got it were from 2003. So, it's like... Damn. Yeah. The, my Was the tread, for like, inverse? No, because it, it would just, it sat for a long time. You know, it's an 80, 1987 oh, okay. BMW, yeah, yeah. right? You know, it's mm-hmm. it's not, it's an older car. And I guess someone let it sit for a long time. And it runs fine, like, when it's running. It just needs a service. It needs new coils, new injectors, new uh, new lines, new bullshit. And I, it's like, I could do that, but I'm going to have to invest, like, I'm really sussed out by oh, European God, cars yeah. like BMW it's and money like, I don't have. Because... <laughs> They're notorious where after like five or eight years, you have to more or less replace a bunch of the electronics in it. And so most people just like lease it, especially if it's like a, a recent or newer one. Mm-hmm. It depends on, yeah. 
depends on the car, and I definitely would buy a newer BMW than what I've got. It's already, like, it's that old, but it's still got some, like, electrical problems where it's just annoying and fucking, I, eh, right? But I'm a mechanic by trade, so, like, I kind of understand how to handle it and what to do with it. Like, it's fine right now, like, I can drive it around town, but if I try to drive it more than, like, an hour at a time in a hot weather, it will start to, like, sputter out and die. And then I have to wait for it to, like, reset. I think it's vapor lock, but... I don't know, I've got, I've got a lot of shit that I gotta do to that car. It's, uh, yeah. it needs a lot of love. <laughs> My next car is gonna be an EV, for sure. Ah, gay! <laughs> Thank you, I know. You're welcome. My next car is gonna be an EV. Why, though? I, just something about like you don't have to change the oil there's less maintenance there's less bullshit it's not true it's not like, true it's way more bullshit yeah like when you get if have you're you like see, out somewhere and you lose a charge you have to like have you seen for Tesla? It to charge at the charger there's like if the whole car is like wired to the fucking ipad the oversized ipad bolted to the fucking dash and if it lock if you like for some reason, it has like an electrical problem or like a little like bug in the software. There's and the, other the EVs besides on, Tesla. You can't drive your car. Oh, there are so are like that. What? Like there's so. Yeah, there's other EVs besides Tesla, but all cars are yeah. like that. No, like, not really. I mean, they're not all like integral to the oversized iPad, but like True. if anything happens to like the electrical stuff in there, like you're screwed. It's all computers. Yeah, but dude, ah, man, I, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm coming for, I, if you are living in like a city or in like an urban mm -hmm. area where you don't have to drive more than 50 miles a day, um, then I, I think it's all right. Like I'm not yeah, I drive, are, realistically, I drive like, like 15 miles a day or no, sorry, it, like 30 miles yeah, a day. If you don't drive for the, if you don't love driving and like enjoy the experience of driving, it's realistically okay. The issue is it's not environment. It's actually environmentally unfriendly to drive electric vehicles. They're very, very bad for the environment. It's uh, is the minerals, the mining it takes to get the batteries and the lithium and to make the batteries creates so much more CO two than you would just driving a nice vehicle. <laughs> and then after the car is like you've driven it for like a hundred thousand miles, then the giant ass expensive battery breaks and your car is worthless at that point because now you have to replace the battery which costs as much as the car. Um, and so then you, they just sit in fields rotting. Like, there are fields in France where they have just rows and rows and rows of electric vehicles that are just sitting there because all of the batteries are dead, but they have a half-life and you can't throw them away because then it'll, like, seep into the fucking ground. And uh, it, it's like they just sit there because you can't do anything with it because it costs way too much train to fix supremacy. it. Train supremacy. And they just, they just waste away. So it's really we not need all the trains. My next all the trains. Movie. We need a global train system. Trains are cool. We need, yes. I like more trains. We need a... Okay, trains okay, are okay. Really cool. I'm only going to say this once. There's a lot of trains. Because I know it's going to get heated. I'm going to give Elon Musk props for throwing a bunch mm -hmm. of fucking money at SpaceX mm -hmm. for reusable rockets. Because in my mind... If we can get to where we just orbit around and slingshot ourselves from one country to another, That's like, cool. fuck it. That sounds awesome. I'm behind that. That sounds very... That does sound pretty cool. You, you know, I, 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 I think that's really cool, but that would probably be awful for the environment. Yeah. Like, you gotta imagine you're blowing a hole through the ozone every time you... I, I, I'm not usually, like, an environmentalist, but I feel I mean, like without... you'd be blowing a hole through the environment, the ozone, every single time you do that. I don't know. I, li I like the SpaceX stuff. I think that it's cool that they're actually, like, doing um, space I, shit. I think the... Really um, cool. The reusable rocket stuff the is way... really interesting. So, like, mm. if, if we're talking about, like, environmentally friendly, I mean, just taking out, taking out all of the um, cruise ships that exists currently would do a significant amount of help more than more than anything else who goes on a cruise ship i want to cruise ships aren't really the biggest issue i, mm. I would say the bigger issue is like realistically america doesn't produce that much co2 emissions it's mainly places that aren't developed like india and china where they have a lot of coal burning plants that are unregulated and they're like mm. not they're not there's not a standard right they don't there's no one going over there and being like this has to be 
to a certain standard where it doesn't emit this much emissions. So that's where like a lot of the emissions come from. But other than that, you, you like planes and jets are a big issue, like a much bigger issue than like I would say than cruises, because you got like, yeah, you got cruises and they're a big problem. They produce a fuck ton of emissions. But have you seen that video of like Taylor Swift's like jet plane? Like, yeah, I've seen. That. It's like, do you it's think ridiculous. about the ridiculous? It's like you think about the amount of carbon footprint that Taylor Swift has is gigantic yeah. comparative to anything else. I don't know. I'm not really worried about global warming, though. I'm more worried about the pole shifting. That's a bigger... Yeah, I don't even know if opinion. it's the environmental part for me. Everyone thinks, like, EVs, and they're like, oh, you're environmentally friendly. Like, no, I just think it's easier. That's true. You know, it, it is... Like, I, it, I, 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 I think they are cool. They, like, they, they do... For that, what you want to do it for, they are reasonable. I just... Uh, I'm too, mm -hmm. like, scared of the, the mini electrical, like... There are a lot of people who are like, oh, my car just decided not to work today. I, I can't get it fixed because the company that fixes it is backed up and won't let me drive I my recently... cars. Now I have a bricked car that I can't drive for like six months. <laughs> that might be just a Tesla yeah, may thing, though. Maybe I would keep like my Subaru to go along I with recently it, had some car like issues a backup because a backup. my mm -hmm. trunk sensor lid, so like it tells whether the car the car's hood is like actually closed, was, um, it was going out. And I didn't realize that was the case. And so having yeah. it like that for like an entire year, at some point over like a week, my it started draining the battery incredibly fast. And to the point to where the starter wouldn't even be able to pull over until like I hook up an actual battery and have it charged. So like even simple shit on gasoline cars, even simple mm -hmm. shit like that on gasoline cars can still, Did you try can hitting still fuck it with over everything. Parasitic drain. Yeah, but that's something that you can get fixed relatively easily. Like in a, like for instance, comparing that to a Tesla, like something like that. Oh yeah, Tesla I would never would, get a Tesla. Yeah, that would brick yeah. your Tesla for a god, a good solid six months. But that's yeah, something like no I could fix that, Tesla's. right? Like, mm -hmm. I I know how to like. That's pretty easy. You can go to pretty much any shop, have that sorted out in a little bit, right? But you know, I'm not sure like other electric vehicles and how good they are. I really can't say to the the quality of them. All I know is Tesla's ass. Yeah, yeah, I've I've always been Tesla. ass, and it's I'd, I'd, like I want to wait until because my car I think is like eight years old, I think something oh. like that. Mm -hmm. that so I want to wait until next year to see what Subaru does with EVs. Subaru and then if they, would be a good company. If they I really want to get the like, the the, the, um, the new EV, then the I'm one Chinese forward. EV to where you can go and be have it completely not completely submerged, but it can it can float in water and go over flooded areas for like up to thirty minutes, and uh, yeah. it's it's incredible. I'm. Yeah. And so, like, I've seen that. Yeah, that's pretty the cool. cool. The funny, oh yeah, I, I guarantee you that will not work. Yeah, someone I feel will like die from that. That's gonna be like an ocean gaze scenario. Or just I, like, uh, oh, yeah. there's water coming in everywhere. I'm really <laughs> waiting for the imports on on Chinese it's very, EVs though, because get that they're, wet experience. they're as cheap as seventeen thousand dollars, and it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. Honestly, I'm gonna yeah. give it like another ten years. I yeah, I'm just worried they're going to tariff the crap out of them. I don't trust that shit. That's some, like, sweatshop labor service? vehicle. Do you have yeah, to I... go... Because, like, do you take them to, like, any car dealer? Like, I can't imagine you could just walk no, into, like, your local not really. service place and be like, Ayo, my Kuang Shi... I've always found going to the dealerships to 5, be more expensive than just going to third-party workshops. So... Uh... Yeah. This is true. Yeah. They're also yeah. more personable. I, I don't yeah. think you get better like quality service at the dealership, though. You, you definitely get better quality. Hmm. Some of I them. Some of them. I've worked in shops like that, and some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Some of them will send you off with a dangerous repair, and some of them won't do the job right. Like I'm, th th I genuinely prefer dealerships because you know the companies are like accountable. If you go to a, a, like a small mom and pop shop, they're gonna be like, sure, that slander. I don't have all day or nothing, but I tightened her good and tight. Yeah, you're sending See, I have the op it's, I had the it's... opposite experience. I went to it. I clipped the mirror on my car and needed to get, like, a new cover for it. So I went to the, like, Subaru dealer to get it actually fixed. And mm -hmm. they ordered... The, the cover was back ordered, so I had to drive up, take it back home until the cover came back. Then when the cover came, it was the wrong color. 
and they were like, oh, well, you can just come and we'll go spray. You can have the car and then you can come back and we'll spray paint it. And then I called them and I was like, hey, can I come get it spray painted? And they were like, no. So now yeah. I just have one mirror that's the wrong color. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, you, you could actually, you should probably go back there and like yell at them for that. You can fuck with them. But it, yeah. that's more like a parts department, like service manager problem. But like, there are companies like, like I worked for this uh, tire or this shop, this small mom and pop shop one time, and there was this Jeep, 2016 Jeep that came in, um, and I swear to God, it was so depressing because it had tires that were it had a, a very low tread tires, like very dangerously low tread tires, like 130 seconds, and there was a a hole in the sidewall. And if you know anything about repairing tires, you never ever ever repair a hole that's in the sidewall. And they, I got this, this thing, and I'm like, hey, this isn't safe. And they're like, send it. The owner doesn't have any money to get a new tire. Send it. And it's like, I am putting this person in danger by repairing this vehicle and putting it back out on the road. This person drives their kids to school every day in this vehicle, and you're going to send them out on a dangerous repair? This is not... I quit that job, like, after that, because it was, like, fucked. And it's like, there are certain shops that just don't have that standard. When I, when I brought my like, car okay, in, yeah, this um, is more expensive, the day that they said that it was this way. ready to get picked up, mm -hmm. I ended up going there, turning, trying to turn the car the on, and it would not turn over, even though they said that they fixed it. And so when they ended up changing the battery, they are like, you can just have the battery for free, because we, we didn't get it the first time. So. That's embarrassing. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's nice. nice. There, there's some places like that. There are some good shops out there that are like, take care of people. And that, there's a, if you can find one of those, hold on to it. Because it's very like, mm -hmm. if you, there are some shops that will try to squeeze you for every ounce of cash you have. Be like, yeah, you need your blanket fluid replaced. Tell you what. And it's like, <laughs> and then there, there are other ones that would be genuinely like, helpful. But I, I think, over, like, generally, like, a dealership is going to be more reliable because at the end of the day, if they do send you off with a repair like that, you can fucking sue the shit out of them. Because a dealership will never send you out on a repair that's dangerous because if you get, like, hurt, you can sue the absolute pants off that company. So they make very well sure mm -hmm. that everything they do is to standard. Yeah, that's also what they call it a lot more, too. Mostly. Not all cross boards, so mostly. There are definitely examples of not, but I don't know. Car mechanic sucks. It's not a good field. Don't recommend it. Yeah, neither is being an engineer. A civic yeah. engineer, well, I mean, yeah. Yo. You're, you're, you're like a civic engineer, right? Yeah. Civil. What do you do? Civil and civic. Civic. You're designing my home to civic, right? Do you know what VTEC <laughs> is? <laughs> what, what do you do exactly? I'm curious. Um. So I basically do like roads and like drainage and stuff like that. That's the best way to describe it. So when you play City Skylines, you're just oh. like a god? Every, everyone always says that. I've never played City Skylines before. Well, I'm you sure gotta I play probably on could be a god at you that got, You've got to play that shit on I've stream. I've never played City Skylines. You gotta it's like play the that meme. Like anytime I tell someone, like, oh, I'm, I'm a civil engineer, they're like, so you must be really good at City Skylines. Or, um, oh, what's the bridge game? Holly Bridge. Polybridge, yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, Poly you must Bridge. be a god at Polybridge. It's like physics. I feel like Polybridge is more mechanical engineering, though. It's like physics. Yeah. Uh, I like, like I love Bridge engineering, engineering is a subset of civil engineering, but I don't know the first thing about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I dropped out of high school. I don't know any of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking funny. You gotta play that on stream now, though. You yeah, just maybe gotta. One day. I've wanted to do more game streams at some point. I'm definitely gonna, like rework my schedule in the future not like my dates but like rework what i do on stream yeah i want to start streaming at like different times like i want to do like an early astro i did not know uh, that i, I streamed that, like, that i started to stream the same yeah, time but... you did i thought like until you rooted one time because like I, I these things are not posted <laughs> I, don't, I don't i feel like nobody really you got to be there to know and i was not yeah you you kind of yeah. have to like figure it out like you just the best thing to do is just to follow all of the femboy streamers and just to keep track of when they're live because i know like finster whenever finster goes live you get like a solid 20 viewers yeah matty was saying so because finster just sucks up all the viewers because that's what finster does but it 
so it's like you gotta figure out when is the best time to stream where like the best time to stream is when no other fanboys are streaming so if you're gonna fam like stream while cow or like anyone else is streaming you're competing with those viewers so it's yeah. like that's, you kind of just have to figure it out that's like, actually why i stream wednesday friday sunday because you yeah. were the first person to raid me and you do tuesday <laughs> thursday saturday yeah so i, I was like hmm yeah. Okay. I, if you want to know my schedule, I try. I try. Keep for try. Uh, to do uh, every set, every set of Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at six p.m. Central. I or six p.m. Eastern. I'm trying to. I might try to like switch some of that up. So maybe doing like uh, maybe Thursday, I'll do it at like three p.m. I don't know. I have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I was shitting my pants because I was like one average viewer away from being able to apply for partner. And I saw that you moved your Thursday stream to Friday, and I was like, motherfucker! <laughs> oh, shit, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. I'm we, we got it, but it was like, oh. Um, I was shitting my pants like, oh, no, please. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes I'll, like... I, I, I hate having to move my stream, but I'm usually like, I try to start at 6 p.m. Eastern, but I usually will be like, yeah, I, I usually be like tired or some bullshit. I, there's been a lot of days and I've just been like too tired to stream and it's really annoying. Yeah, even though like Femboy Drumming is a really awesome name, it is a really awesome name. I, I've thought about changing it. It's, it's generic, you know, there's not yeah. a lot of characters like, to it. Anymore, I don't do very much drumming on stream anymore. I mainly like the other femboys that just talk to chat yeah and i've kind of like lately kind of gone away from the femboy name mm -hmm. right i don't know i went from like well, go, i went from I, liking the femboy name to not really like associating with it very much you like you, i think maddie is a good like it's usually what i think of what i think yeah, of everyone you, says I think maddie. Of maddie so yeah. it's got to be something to do with maddie i just don't know what it is maddie patty maddie patty <laughs> <laughs> all right we've been going for like a good hour and 40 minutes you think hour about 45 minutes 45 minutes for hour 45 minutes you guys ready to call it you guys ready to call it there we can do it there, uh, buddy. you can find hell me. yeah brother hey, where, four, buddy Selka, where can we find you uh <laughs> where is your home address and your zip code <laughs> and your credit card number you can find me at twitch.tv slash what is that cohesion so S O C O S I O N, and uh, yeah, I stream during the week. I stream the same times as Astra, so like Tuesdays and Thursdays. I am gonna be switching that up though. Like I'm gonna be streaming tomorrow for for a start. Get wrecked. I yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try fucking <laughs> with it. Uh, compete with uh, compete with Maddie for viewers. That 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 that'd be fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fight. <laughs> Femboy fights. I just spam Today your chat. Sunday, Femboy Smackdowns. Masoko versus Manny. Rumble in the jungle. Rumble in the jungle. <laughs> All right. Well, All thank right. you for uh, coming uh, onto the podcast, Soko. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Soko. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been the Femboy Podcast. Uh, whatever we decide to call it it was small ones last week whatever it is this week it's so it's small ones fanboy podcast <laughs> fm boys podcast it's the podcast with astra and maddie and guests uh, thank you for watching bye <laughs> there we go it's, 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 yeah. It's, yeah yeah